To at least as a group uh, last time. Okay? <coughs> so I'll just go ahead and erase this. No, I have to actually erase it. I'm going erase it. No. I hate it. Banging rocks together. Okay, so 2 pi times r times. The value of h, which has to be for the same radius, whatever this radius is, if we take 3302.108 and divide by pi r squared, we'll get the height. Okay. So now this is uh, a is a, a formula or a function that can someone describe this. <laughs> it, it shows the change in uh, the amount of surface area, the, the different uh, lengths of radius. I'll say yes and no. It, it for a given radius of the can, a can with this much volume, 
and then a given radius that we choose, and therefore the height has to be a certain, you know, certain value. It will give us, this function will give us the area, the surface area that we can. But I would say where I differ from your answer is that it's not about the change, it's about the change. Uh, yeah. Is that a plus? This little thing? Yes. All right. So we have this function that tells us the area, just tells us put in a radius, uh, and obviously it's assumed that it'll have this volume, this camera, this volume. But with a given radius, we can put a radius of 2, a radius of 5, a radius of 7, whatever we choose, and it'll give us the surface area of that can. So what is it we were wanting to do? Find the best, best radius, least amount of area. Right? And that little graph that I erased said, well, we've got these big volumes for small radius. Uh, these uh, small, these, uh, oh, no, no, big volumes again for big radius, right? Because one of the dimensions is approaching zero, which is making this volume go off to infinity. And somewhere in between, we've got this optimal minimum value of A. So how do we find minimum? First year. So the first derivative test, or the second derivative test, or we don't want to take the second derivative of this thing. So we want to take the derivative of this function, right? Yeah. But before we do that, before we throw a prime on there and start taking the derivative as it appears now, let's see if there's any way to make taking the derivative easier by making this function more simplified. Okay, so we'll take off the prime. We're just going to simplify the a function. Area as a function of radius. Can you eliminate a pi r? What's that? Can you eliminate a pi r? We can eliminate a pi and one of these r's. Yes. Uh, we can also multiply this by 2. Yes. Just combine those together. So you get 6604.116216 over r plus 2 pi r squared. Certainly a little bit easier. And I would say it's even easier to take the derivative if we look at it this way. Now it's just to a single power. Now we don't have to do like a quotient rule and stuff. If you do the quotient yeah, rule, it's exactly the same. It'll all come out just fine. That's not nice. Okay. All right, so let's take the derivative. A prime of all. Start with you got a plus there, so we take the derivative of this function. And you have six thousand six hundred four point two one six r negative. Very good. Derivative of this function. Four pi r. Let's all pause here for a second. Yeah. Six times six hundred four point two one six is negative. Is negative? Oh, I didn't say negative. Oh, there it is. Okay, I was looking oh. for that. Uh, so for this one, remember that pi is a number. It is not a variable. It, it is a letter, but it's not a variable. It's a fixed uh, number, meaning it's a constant. So if we want to take the derivative of this, it wouldn't be any different than if we wanted to take the derivative of this. Right? Two would go down, multiply by the constant. Uh, well, uh, six, we get 12r. Same thing over here. This multiplies by the constant. Two times two times pi would be four pi. That 2 pi is just a constant out in front of the, the variable. Okay, so we took the derivative, and now we can rewrite this without negative exponents. <coughs> what do we have here? The derivative of the area function. What are we going to do with that derivative? Approved by what? Addition. By plus. We. That's a board from it here. What do we do with it? Equal to zero. Set it equal to zero because that's where the slope will be zero, or the tangent line will be flat, which means that either the area is the biggest it can be or the smallest one. Is there a maximum value for the area? No. 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 I guess 
goes off to infinity. The smaller r gets, the bigger the area gets, and r can never get to zero because then we wouldn't have a can. That wouldn't make any sense. Also, we'd be dividing by zero. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, it just goes off to infinity. And uh, if r were to increase without bound, we can look up here at this function. Then this part would go to zero because r would be so big, but then this part would be going to infinity. Right? So there is no maximum value of a that we can conceive. So if we find a zero slope, it must be a minimum. If it's an extreme at all. If it's an extreme at all, yeah. I would say because we understand the situation, because we understand the scenario, we've made this function. It represents something in real life. So we know that it's got to, there's got to be a minimum to this scenario. So it's a safe assumption that the zeros we find will be extrema. Um, well, it's safe to say if we find one uh, r value, it gives us an extreme, a max or a min, that it is a max or a, that, well, that it is a minimum, there is a maximum value. Right? That's kind of the, the beauty of a real life scenario that we designed the function for, we know it has to have certain properties. So we've made it, and it represents a real life scenario, and we know what the real life scenario, the like, parameters of it. Anyway. So we're going to set it equal to zero and solve for r. I guess it's the denominator of r squared. Oh, oh, no. I'm going to do the rest of the lesson I have Get it right before you choose it. It's going to be broken. Okay. Um, so we got this denominator of r squared. We don't like those denominators of variables, and then what can we do about it? Multiply. Multiply by r squared. R squared. I like it. Multiply both sides by r squared. So we distribute it to here. We just cancel out the denominator, which is beautiful. And when we multiply it by over here, we get 4 pi r cubed, 0. And how are we going to solve for r? Add 6,000. Okay, add that thing, yeah. 4 pi r cubed equals 6,600. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 
Interesting. So if you were to look at this can from the front, exactly the front, what would it look like? It would be like square-ish. It would look like a square. Now it wouldn't be as cute because if we turn and look at the top, it would be a circle. But for so what do you think? If I gave you a can that had a given volume, how would you imagine you find the optimum dimension? You'd make it as compact and even as possible because if you have the radius too small, then it's uh -huh. tall and narrow and just oblong and it takes yeah. space. But if you make it as square, it's ridiculous. Uh -huh. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. So why are number 10 cans uh, square? It's That's a good question. Why is that? Maybe because of the metal that you use in, in the lids, or maybe they found that uh, customers buy more number 10 cans if they are a little bit taller than they are wide, or maybe it's just they didn't consider these things when they started making these cans, and it's just tradition, or... They don't care. That's maybe they need the extra room to print things on the labels, I don't know. Uh, but it's... Right. Be, it'd be cool if until you try to use the cup holder and just do the theory. Where's that? Where you have this giant square. There are some soda cans now that are like less yeah, less soda and they're kind of yeah. square ish. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have the 20 ounce ones that are like ridiculous. Yeah, so clearly, hardly any cans. They're, they're closer. Sorry. We're on me now. Oh, sassy. Uh, so I haven't seen any cans that I, that I can think of that, that are shaped this way. So it seems no can manufacturers are considering what like is cheap, the cheapest can to make. We should write a letter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dum dums. Have you ever thought about that? Dum dum chum Okay, well let's do one more example like this yeah. from the book. Okay. I agree. What's the seriously, you guys are So that needs to be replaced with something? Well, like you know that it needs to be replaced, but then you pull those little can't put the surface area formula into there. Uh -huh. and it needs to be the volume formula. Because it'd be kind of an exception if we solve for H with the area and then put it back into itself, right? It's kind of you pulling it. Where? So you would just get like 2 equals 2 or 1 equals 1 or something like that if you tried to solve it. Because you basically you're going one thing. Yeah, it's. It's hard to explain. You try it. You can try it with a simpler equation, like any equation. 2x yes. plus y equals 5. If that's all the information you have, you can't really solve for x and y. Right? x and y could be anything, almost anything, as long as in this equation they add up to 5. Uh, you need another equation with other parameters making other demands on x and y to tell you what one or the other should be depending on the other one. Does that make sense? So we just solved for y here. We got y equals 5 minus 2x. And then we plug this back into there. So the equation is holding in on itself. We get 2x plus 5 minus 2x equals 5. See how we can just start to cancel out and try to solve for x? 5 equals 5. So 5 equals 5, then you can make it anything. That's true. 0 equals 0, 5 equals 5, 1 equals 1. That's why you can't just do that. This is just really, what we have here is a system of equations. Remember systems of equations? System of two equations and two variables. The two variables are R and H. The two equations are the one for area and the one for volume. We solve for one, replace it in the other. Substitution, substitution method. Let's pick out another one and uh, do that. Let's do 20. Number 20. 
Go ahead and um, attack it on your own. Try to think, okay. what approach should I use in the can problem? Are we going to have two equations, two unknowns? Because it's like it needs, the, the different measurements, x and y, are going to have to meet different parameters. Uh, it looks like probably what about perimeter? What about area? One of them is going to be optimal. One of them is set. Either the area or the perimeter is going to be like a set value that it has to always be this. So uh, just try to take those things into consideration and, and uh, use the problem that we did together as a guide. Here we go. Uh, I'm not getting mad at you, really. Okay. Uh, okay, so we want to optimize what? What needs to be the best? The area. The area. Area. The area, okay. The area. So we're going to have an area function, do you think, probably? probably? Yeah. Okay. And with that area function, what do you think we'll probably do with it? Derivative. It's obviously it's derivative, right? Mm -hmm. So then we'll probably use some other equation to help out that Aww. equation. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's think about that. Uh, first, let's uh, write an area equation. And I saw some of you uh, change this from two x's to like a single x or a single l or something like that. And that work, that'll work just fine, of course. Uh, but we'll just use the way this diagram is written out. And it should all come out the same. Okay, so the area is equal to what? X. 2x. 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 What? Y. Two x y. Two times x times y. Okay, because that's just length times width or width and length, whichever we want to call it. Okay, now we'll um, we can call it perimeter. Yeah. Perimeter is kind of misleading. We could call it fencing. Uh, L or okay F for fencing. I was thinking L for length of fence. But fencing is good. Fencing is what? Two hundred. Is 200, and that 200 needs to be found by adding up what? 4x uh, plus 3y. Okay, so we don't even need that f really. 200, the total amount of fence is equal to 4x plus 3y. We, we said before we want the area to be optimized, we want to find its maximum, right? Not its minimum, we're going to find its maximum value. So we're going to take the derivative of it, but we have two variables. We want to get that down to one variable. How do we get that down to one variable? Solve this for something. It doesn't even matter which one, right? So maybe uh, x. Solve for x. Okay. So 200 no, 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 sorry. minus, okay, for y, minus 4x <laughs> over 3 is equal to y. So the area function, now it's a function of x, equals 2 times x times. 200 minus 4x over 3. So, hey, let's see if we can add. Uh, yeah, we should clean this up a little bit. Make it easier on ourselves. So, uh, 400x minus 8x squared uh, over 3. And we can make it we take the derivative, we can look at it like this. Just to make it a little easier too. Okay, so a prime is, well, we have the constant multiple rule telling us we can just take one third times the derivative of this. Uh, the derivative of this is 100 minus 16x. And what do we do with this derivative? So it equals zero because we want to find the slope of the area function would be zero. At some point, the area function 
as say as x gets bigger, the area is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but then eventually x will be too big, and they'll start like taking away from the values that y could be, and it'll bring it back down. Bring it back down. So at some point, we're going to have a maximum value of the area. 0 equals 1 third is 400 minus 16x. And we could multiply by 3, 400 uh, equals, see, equals 16x. x equals 400 divided by 16. Uh, I just multiply by three on both sides, okay. right? And I just got zero equals 400 minus 16x, then added 16x to both sides. Oh. Just 400 divided by 16? Seems like it would be that. 25. So x is 25, which means this is also 25, which means this side is 50. And this side is also a 25 and a 25. So that's another 50. So a total of, with the, all the x's is 100. Mm -hmm. So we take the 100 from the 200, and we have that to split up among the three y's. Yeah? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. We've got uh, 4x plus 3y equals 200. So we can do, or, or this, 200 minus 4 times x, which we found to be 25. 3 equals y, which would be 33.3 repeating. It's going to be. Really not that tricky for him to measure out, right? He's going to measure out 33 and one third in a foot. So you can see there's going to be a function that you want to optimize, which means you're going to make a derivative of it. You need some other function, which has some other parameters on it, like the total fencing you have can only be this much, or the total volume of the can can only be this much, or the total uh, amount of paper you have to work with is this much, or whatever. And you'll take the one and solve for a variable, put the variable that you solve for into the other function that you're going to take the derivative of. That's the area. 33.3 times 100. So it's not too hard. It's not Once you figure it out. There is a, a pretty set blueprint to these. And it's probably an easier blueprint. Times 50? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Times 50. Uh, it'll be an easier blueprint than probably the related race blueprint, because that's more vague. This one is, you're typically going to have two equations. One of them you're going to optimize, which means you're going to take the derivative of it. The other one is going to be some, some specific number within the problem is going to be mentioned. Uh, and you'll use that one to solve for one of the variables, replace one of the variables with the differentiable equation with that. Done a couple of those, and they're all going to be pretty much the same. Why are they spelling the same? Oh, that's scratch paper. That I get from Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your daughter's spelling rights, and I was looking at them, and it's like she's home advanced. and numb. Yeah, number three. She's, she's a number three. She's a three year old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's a really good She can't count to two. Are you going to have another child? How many more? Do you hope to have a boy? You don't care? I hope they have healthy children. Uh, I know what? somebody who named their boy Lev. Three letters. I've got uh, this no, because the wife's name was seven. Like no, the wife's name was seven letters. The husband's was six. The first daughter was five. The oh. second daughter was four. Lev is three. Hi, boy. That's what I was about to say. Hi. Hey, but yeah, that lady just named her kid Obi. Hey, I've got a friend that has. What is up? It's Monday and it's, it's snowing and we just want to see Christmas on Monday. What the snow is? I maybe we just want to do like some jumping jacks. It's so fluffy. I'm gonna try. I have a lot of energy. <laughs>